And uh, we're going to move on to um, our first uh, uh, main event of uh, Flower Monthly this month, which is our, um, our experiment. We're going to try um, an interview series. And so for the first interview series, we're going to discuss federated learning standards. And in thinking about this topic, I could think about uh, no other, uh, no, no better people to ask and discuss this topic than uh, Patrick Foley, who is the OpenFL lead architect and an engineering manager at Intel. And uh, Daniel Buto, who I'm sure many of you know, he is uh, the co-creator of, of uh, Flower, but also on the OpenFL consortium, he is on the uh, technical steering uh, committee. And so um, just to sort of tee this up a little bit, I'd highly recommend that you check out um, um, Patrick's guest blog um, on federated learning standards. The URL is at the bottom there, um, or you can easily just go to the blogs um, and you'll see it's, I think it's the most recent blog that was posted. And he described uh, the need for uh, standards that, and the work that's underway um, within the Open uh, FL Consortium to, to make progress on this topic. Uh, and, uh, and most importantly, uh, a call to action to anyone who's interested in this um, today. And so um, during this um, interview, if you want to ask a question, uh, raise your hand. And what I'll try to do as an experiment is allow you to talk and you can, you can tell us what your question is. It's the first time we've done this and so we'll see how it goes. Um, I've got a couple of questions for these guys here. But I think it'd probably be natural to also stop uh, sharing so you can see them more clearly. And then um, I'll just kick things off with a, uh, with a sort of obvious sort of question. Um, so Patrick, um, maybe do you want to tell us what OpenFL is all about and trying to accomplish to give us sort of a landscape view of this? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Nick. And, and thanks for having me uh, for this interview panel uh, for the, the Flyer Monthly today. It's great to, to see the, the community that, that your team is putting together and uh, in this format. Um, so OpenFL is, is, stands for Open Federated Learning. It's another uh, federated learning framework that started in, in the uh, 2017 timeframe uh, through Intel's partnership with uh, the University of Pennsylvania, um, developing a federated um, a set of federated experiments for brain tumor segmentation um, that ended up being used in, in one of the largest uh, healthcare federations worldwide. Um, so OpenFL has gone from being a, a research piece of code to, to something that is intended uh, and it's been taken to, to production um, and is, is now being transferred over from Intel Labs to, to a different development team within Intel. And in the, the last, um, I think, six months, we actually moved the project under, from, from Intel to the Linux Foundation, where, uh, where Daniel joins us on the, the technical steering committee for, for OpenFL in addition to uh, VMware, Lidos, and the University of Pennsylvania. So this is now a community-driven project, and the, the, um, the work on federated standards uh, really speaks to the, the community-driven need that there is in, in federated learning to have the, a basis for, um, for, for interoperability between uh, really nascent frameworks that have, have come up under since, since the, the Google paper uh, in, in 2016. I see. Excellent, excellent. Maybe, um, Daniel, um, so you've been joining a few of these um, steering committee meetings so far. What have the topics um, been uh, discussed uh, within the steering committee? I think the interesting thing is um, that there's been such a wide range of possible topics um, that are um, just begging uh, to, to have discussions about uh, for standardization. And um, it, it's quite interesting if we if we look at the evolution of uh, federated learning frameworks, um, I think there are quite a few parallels to how de regular deep learning frameworks uh, like TensorFlow and PyTorch have evolved where um, before these frameworks existed, there was sort of the Wild West, everyone uh, just hacked something together. Then eventually um, different frameworks emerged. We had this um, just a huge variety of different frameworks. And then eventually we saw different patterns emerge in frameworks. So um, frameworks started to um, converge towards a, a common set of components, something like in a regular deep learning framework, it would be something like an optimizer, for example, or the, just a notion of a, no, a model and, and things like that, loss functions, for example. And um, those have been built in, into these frameworks. And then eventually over time, I think people realize that uh, some level of compatibility um, offers a lot of um, upside, actually. And then um, first steps towards comp compatibility have been taken, where um, in regular deep learning, for example, something like Onyx, um, is there to create compatibility between these frameworks. 
Now for federated learning, we're sort of in this um, in in this stage where um, it's not even perfectly clear what kind of components um, exist in these frameworks. We're starting to see some of these components emerge. We're starting to see that uh, these frameworks, for example, they have something like aggregation needs to happen somewhere, client selection and configuration needs to happen somewhere, um, some portion of the workload needs to happen on the client, um, model parameters need to be serialized and sent over the network um, and then received again. Things like that are, are starting to emerge, but I think we're still at this interesting point where different frameworks approach it in, in very, very different ways. And as we've seen in in the um, in the regular deep learning space where we have some level of compatibility between these frameworks, um, we suddenly see that, um, for example, infrastructure like cloud infrastructure starts to support these, um, the, these, um, these standards and suddenly um, things become a lot easier to use, a lot safer to use, and um, a, 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 it's a lot more um, economic to build these kinds of workloads. And we are hoping with the standardization effort to, to go in a similar direction. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I guess, Patrick, a natural question that comes to my mind would be, um, once we, I mean, this is kind of a fast forwarding question and we're kind of then we'll backtrack, but a fast forwarding yeah. question would be, um, where can this take us? So once we have these standards in place in a couple of years down the track, um, what do you think might be enabled in that case? Yeah, so, so from my perspective, it's really exciting in terms of where the, the future of standards could, could take all, all of these, these uh, federated learning uh, projects that um, today are, are somewhat siloed in their, their approach. And uh, uh, what, what a future could look like is, is a recognition that there, there are uh, unique benefits for, for the, the way that, that different teams have developed these, these projects. And um, by having uh, standards that allow them to interoperate, um, that really uh, allows people who want to deploy um, these these federations uh, for, for themselves and the start of these projects to to have the best of both worlds in in many ways. So so Flower's done a fantastic job of building uh, I mean multiple language interoperability. I think starting largely as a Python framework like OpenFL, but really building a lot of support for for mobile devices. I, I saw the C plus plus is a uh, uh, one of the the SDKs that you're working on. It's it's really exciting to see that kind of uh, interoperability um, it, it, for from the language perspective and then on the OpenFL side we we've been putting a lot of focus into um uh, uh privacy and security um through the use of, of trusted execution environments and and so we would like love to have a future where it's possible to use some of the the flower interfaces um and and build you know on the the, the the community passion that's uh, uh, been uh, that's very evident for for the the, the, frame, the the interfaces that you've built and have that run within a tr within a, a trusted execution environment and even have the, these hybrid environments where there's uh, maybe a, an OpenFL aggregator and Flower uh, Flower collaborators that run on uh, uh, iOS or or Android devices. Um, so so that, those are some of the ideas that I think that we've been been brainstorming and talking about when when we think through the next couple of years about where where this could go. Um, but that's that's really just the the start too. I, I think there's there's uh, lower level components too that um, a, allow for new higher level frameworks and interfaces to be built on on top of. And so there's a lot of potential going that down that direction too, in terms of uh, not, not just the benefits that each of us bring uh, in terms of our, our capabilities, but but new new ideas and higher level abstractions that we haven't thought of yet. Right, right. I think this, I mean, this is a, probably a good point to uh, pause and see if there's any questions from folks in the uh, audience at all. Um, so if, if you're out there, um, just raise your hand. Um, if you're one of the panelists, you can like visually raise your hand if you're, we've got a question already. That's great. This is from um, Pedro. I mean, if I, if I know the person, I'll tell you where, I, where they're from. If I don't know where you're from, I'm sorry about that. But I know Pedro is from the University of Cambridge. I'm going to press the button so we can talk. Um, so. Uh, Pedro, I think you're able to speak right now. Hi, um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, thanks yeah, for the intro. Uh, I was just wondering, will the standard also look into security protocols for uh, FL? 
That's that's a great Daniel. question, and maybe I'll I'll start with that, and Daniel, uh, you can yeah. you can jump in too. Um, but my thinking is that it it will. So so we we have um, we're we're going to start I think by looking at some of the um, uh, serialization standards and, and network communication. But um, the the way that those standards are designed is intended to be done in a secure way that is amenable to to review by. Um, different cloud providers, I think, uh, uh, Daniel, is, is uh, you, you were saying. Um, and, and then as far as the security standards go, um, on the OpenFL team, we're working on a set of capabilities that enable the trust of, or the, the use of trusted execution environments. And we we intend on open sourcing that in the, the near future. And so uh, longer term, there's that we, we have the intent of, uh, of, of making those types of interfaces that we're, we're starting with OpenFL in terms of the the, the uh, security property properties that they enhance um, and bringing those to, to other frameworks. That's the the direction that we would we would love to go. And so the the security standards direction is certainly something that that we uh, we we would love to be able to to collaborate on. Absolutely. Um, uh, maybe just to add a few comments, I, I fully agree. Uh, first of all, with what uh, Patrick was saying. And I think um, it's an excellent question. I think um, security is actually one of the areas that I'm most excited about um, when it comes to standardization, because um, we're currently building, for example, a, um, a, a new way to do secure aggregation into Flower. And um, this, is, this is not an easy thing to build. And this, is, this requires, requires quite a lot of dedication, requires lot, quite a lot of thinking and, and code review and so on to get right. And it would just, um, not make sense for, for, for all of the frameworks that are out there to reinvent these pieces. And then OpenFL, for example, has been has done pioneering work when it comes to um, uh, execution and trusted um, execution environments. Um, I mean, um, Intel probably has the best people in the world when it comes to Intel SGX and things like that. Um, so it would only make sense to, um, to have these components um, usable in a, in a standardized way. And then for other frameworks like Flower to just plug in these components um, and use them and rely on them um, as, as, a, a, as a bulletproof um, implementation. Great, thank you, uh, Pedro, for the question. Um, I'm happy to take uh, another question and then we can go on to a few other questions I had, if there's any. Um, okay, friend, um, Francesco. From Inria, uh, let me allow you to talk. Feel free to Hi. ask your question. Thank you. Hi. Um, as the developer of yet another framework, I was wondering if uh, you plan to open the the committee to participation from outsiders, and in general, what is the plan for publishing standards, and how can we, you know, make sure that we comply to them? Thank you. Daniel, do you want to start with that one? Um, absolutely. I, I think the intent of um, putting out the blog post and um, having this session today and also probably Patrick's talk at the last Flower Summit is exactly to invite other framework authors um, to participate in this effort. Um, the, the OpenFL code base um, recently moved under, under the Linux Foundation. And um, there we have this um, shared space where these standards can be um, developed together. It's um, uh, we are in the process of uh, of setting up the the repo where we will um, similar to how um, Python does it with um, with the the pip process if you're familiar with that where we will start to write down um, our, um, our our thinking about this and then start to evolve these um, these standards and it's um, the, the the most immediate thing that anyone can do is um, check out the PRs um, make comments on the PRs um, contribute to the PRs. Um, and then eventually um, also participate um, in, in the discussions around it. Yeah, for, for Cisco, it's Thank great you. to see another uh, uh, framework uh, uh, author team that's that's uh, joining this this call today. And I, I fully agree with what what Daniel said. So so we we want this to be a very collaborative effort and seek community feedback in, in terms of uh, how these standards are, are developed. Um, I, I think the the intent 
uh, for for the, the first couple is, is to uh, really have these proposals that, that are based on on the, the pep process um, uh, for, for Python and uh, just get some, some a, a couple of examples uh, in, in this repo first in terms of what the the structure of the proposals will, will look like uh, but certainly your, your feedback and others in the, the FL community uh, is going to be critical to, to making sure that these are, are successful and um, taken up by by um, not not just Flower and OpenFL, but but others. Great, thank you. So then, um, I guess one one question uh, that I was going to ask uh, while we wait for other people who might have uh, things to ask uh, is, um, I wonder if we could dive down into one of these components because I noticed when Daniel was speaking in particular, um, he was sort of outlining a lot of different things that we could work on. Um, and it, it can clear there's a lot of places where these things can connect with these frameworks and so on. Um, so I was kind of curious about um, if we could just sort of dive into just one of these things that you both might be feel passionate about. So feel free to, to, to discuss and find which one you might uh, have an interest in. And then, um, yeah, just, to, just discuss with everybody um, what would be this um, particular component, how, how, what level of interoperability exists right now, and then what would a proper standard look like and some of the issues that might um, sort of emerge from that. And that might also um, uh, prompt some discussion from the audience too. They might disagree with some of the things said, which would be, which would be fantastic actually. Absolutely. Should we start with serialization, Patrick? Or um... I, I think that's, that's a great place to start, yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to go ahead or should sure, I? Sure, yeah. So so I think we, we've been talking about, so Daniel, myself, others on the OpenFL side and, and on the, the flower side have been talking about serialization standards for, for a, a bit of time now. And the, um, the, the, first, just to define what that, that means, there's um, both uh, uh, OpenFL as well as, as flower use gRPC and, and the protobuf definition as the, um, the, the, the mechanism for communication between uh, client and, and server. Um, there's other frameworks that, that define that network communication in different ways, but, um, but that, that protobuf definition uh, looks fairly similar between OpenFL and flower today in terms of the, the ways that, uh, that that's defined. There's some differences in terms of how models get or uh, model weights get, get sent across the, the network and what gets embedded within these these messages. Uh, Flower passes uh, 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 models entirely uh, in, in their entirety, whereas OpenFL pa passes them on a layer-wise basis. Um, Flower has to deal with uh, a, a big Indian as well as little Indian uh, use cases because of the different clients they, they support. And OpenFL is starting to look at other, uh, other, other types of information beyond just uh, NumPy uh, weights that could be sent across the, the network as well. And so this, this is giving us an opportunity to think about what, it, what are the common um, pieces that are going to be needed between um, Flower and OpenFL. And as we broaden the conversation to, to others who, who want to participate in this, um, really what that common denominator is in terms of supporting the, the, the maximum number of, uh, of use cases that, that we can and have well-defined policies in place so that uh, what is being sent across the network is reviewable by, by someone who, who, let's say a, um, a healthcare institution uh, and their, their IT um, uh, security team that, that wants to see what's actually going to be uh, uh, loading their, their data um, locally to, to make sure that nothing is being exfiltrated outside of their, their walled garden that, that shouldn't. And so being able to, to place some limitations in, in terms of uh, information that gets done across the network and and having well-defined ways of um, the types of transformations that can that can occur um, either on a client or on a server, um, and making those those pieces interoperable interoperable too between frameworks would be uh, I think there, there's there's a, a long thread of, of potential directions that, that we could we could tackle just from from that alone. I think maybe just to add a few words to that. Um, uh... What I found fascinating in those discussions is um, how many pieces of the stack are actually um, uh, impacted by those decisions that you make early on, especially when it comes to serialization. With serialization, there's these um, different approaches to, um, to build a framework. For example, you could, um, at the point where uh, the message arrives on the server side, uh, you could immediately deserialize it and then just um, pass pass around between different components uh, the deserialized version of, of, of a message. 
You could also build all of these components to expect a serialized version and then um, the component would deserialize it itself um, if that's necessary because many components don't need a deserialized message. There are pros and cons to both and um, other other things that will um, probably come later in those um, in those standardization discussions, things like um, aggregation or compression or things like that, um, all of those are impacted by those early decisions uh, when it comes to serialization. And one of the things I found I found very interesting, and that also gets me excited about this standardization effort, is um, the fact that I think often when uh, people talk about uh, sorry uh, standardization, it feels a little bit like okay, standardization is the thing that everybody can agree on. We write down the sort of this this small thing uh, that everyone agrees on, and then that's something that everyone can implement. What was interesting for me in those discussions was. Um, Suddenly, we talk very, very in 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 super detailed uh, terms about um, these components, and um, it helps me to understand better what, uh, for example, OpenFL has been doing. Um, OpenFL understands better what Flower has been doing, and we see really in 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 super super zoomed in um, uh, what are what are the things that are enabled by the way of modeling it like that. What are the limitations of a certain way to approach it, and um, during the uh, through those discussions we learn from each other and uh, new ideas come up and i think eventually this will not just result in standardization and better compatibility but it will result in better frameworks overall um, because we suddenly everyone tries to um, discover this space and tries to build a good solution but through the interaction between uh, different frameworks we learn from each other and, and we'll eventually be able to build better frameworks through that Excellent, excellent. Um, I, I guess I, I, when you guys have both talked about this topic, uh, where do you think there uh, have there been any uh, examples of disagreement, or as all just violent agreement? Or I'm just kind of curious about um, how close to the coming up with a design of this um, the members of OpenFL are. In fact. Um, yeah. So, sorry, Daniel. Do you want to go start first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so, so one of the things that uh, I, th I think there was a, a lot of uh, violent agreement um, about many <laughs> things. For example, um, that we should be able to um, uh, serialize not just NumPy and the arrays, but also other things, um, and and uh, really make this make this transparent on a communication layer. What I found interesting, and and what I wanted to um, also maybe the reason why I wanted to start uh, this time was um, I, I wanted to thank Patrick for, for inviting me to the um, OpenFL uh, TSC um, because I think the, um, in, in this round the discussions have been have been very um, very open. Um, everyone was really um, saying okay this is how we did it but here's five things that is that is wrong with that that we wish we did in, in a different way and through that um, I think this was a, a super healthy debate and, um, and super interesting for me um, also to, to learn more about other approaches. Yeah, th thanks, Daniel. And I, I would agree. I think that there's there's mostly just been uh, a agreement so far on uh, the, the different topics that we've we've looked at. And uh, when, when it comes down to it, we started. I mean, everyone who's worked on a federated learning framework makes decisions uh, early on, and, and those impact a, a lot of the, the future design of of what the, the framework looks like. And so this this really gives us an opportunity to to uh, at least on the OpenFL side to revisit a lot of those decisions and and figure out um, what. What the best way is, and, and where um, where others have have uh, made choices that led to to better outcomes over over the long term. Um, so so I, it's it's really exciting in terms of um, it, where some some of the common components that we can start with, because serialization is certainly high impact. I think compression is is certainly uh, another of those, as well as aggregation algorithms. Um, it's it's refreshing to hear about the focus on reproducibility within the, the flower team, because I think that beyond just the algorithmic reproducibility, um, once we have standardization really uh, making some traction, then there's going to be more reproducibility at the framework level and across different frameworks uh, as well, which is uh, going to really, um, I, I think, be a boon to uh, to researchers who, um, who who want to verify their implementations and for also for the framework developers who want to make sure that they're, they're not calculating something um, wrong or have a off by one error. So um, yeah, it's it's been, I think, a great collaboration so far. 
Great. Well, then I guess I would invite uh, anyone uh, in attendance if they want to ask uh, additional questions. We've got a few more that we can run through, but don't be shy. This is mainly um, mainly for yourself if you have anything. Um, but I was um, probably wait to see if anything else is going to pop up. Uh, another question I had was um, a sort of obvious one, just a small one. Was do we do you think that um, uh, this will be the first thing that uh, is agreed upon and maybe starts to be implemented in multiple frameworks, or is there something else that you think might be a, a standard, a, a sort of an agreed upon standard ahead of it, or any thoughts on that? Serialization is up there for me, just because I think that uh, there there's a lot of overlap um, in in terms of. Uh, it, it, and at least I think will lead to traction in terms of being able to get these standards defined relatively quickly, um, and which I think is is going to provide more motivation to build other standards on on top of that. I, I think there's other certainly other candidates for for where we we might want to uh, build some standards early on too. Um, how how tensors are are stored and what the database for for this looks like. We've we've talked in the past about um, authorization policies for for which which collaborators or aggregators are able to access uh, certain. Uh, certain layers within a model um, and uh, really defining what that would look like would, would also lead to this framework interoperability that I think is, is one mm. of our, our, our goals over the long term. So um, I, I think there's there's a lot of potential directions we could go and, and certainly on the OpenFL and, and Flower teams, we're going to have, I think, things that, that uh, rank near the top of our list. But um, as, because this project is, is open source and we're already hearing from other framework developers who want to be a part of this, we're going to get some other, I, I think, ideas uh, along the way too, and those could move their way to the, the top of this list. Uh, Daniel, anything to add? Or? Absolutely, I, I fully agree. I think serialization has high impact. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see um, what uh, solution we'll arrive at. Um, uh, and um, maybe the first solution will also not be perfect. Uh, that, that's uh, rarely the case. And I think uh, the, the beauty of a, a standard is also that we can evolve the standard over time, that we can uh, propose additional versions of the standard. And then say, um, here's version one of the standard. Everyone impl implements it. Uh, we um, we get a confidence in what works. Uh, we might might see that some things are not fully um, spec'd out yet, and then uh, we'll we'll evolve the standard along these lines. Great, great. Oh wait, we just got another question. So it comes from Juan, and he asks, how are you going to focus on federated data sets and federated synthetic data generation? Um, yeah, so I'll put it out there to you both. That's that's a great question, and and that has not been um, at the top of my list. But I think there's there's good reason for for wanting to have those uh, that that capability in place because um, it's it's something that we this, this goes back to every choice that, that framework developers make and and we have our own ways of, of developing these these federated data sets but i think there's there's a lot of room for exploration on the the research side and having well-defined standards for that would would certainly uh um lead to experiments that can be reproduced across frameworks so um i i love that idea and would love to to see i mean once we we start making some traction on these proposals see see one from uh um, uh, around that, that federated data sets and, and, and generation of synthetic data, because that, that seems pretty interesting. Yeah, I fully agree. I think especially the aspect of uh, federated data sets and how clients load data and how um, maybe clients coming from different frameworks could access um, local data in the same way. I think this is a, 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 a key topic in federated learning. Um, and then um, federated, um, I mean, uh, generating data sets, um, this could be something where uh, once we define the standard on how these data sets are being loaded, what sort of the interface between the federated learning framework and the data source is, um, then there could be different tools to, to generate these data sets artificially or in, in, in whatever way um, uh, locally. Um, yeah. Great, great. Well, um, we're starting to run out of time, but this has been a great um, kickoff for the interview series format of, of content we've been looking to introduce in Flower Monthly. And so I really want to thank you both for coming today. It's been a great first edition, and I think it really has provoked uh, a lot of interest in the community and hopefully a lot of follow-on um, activity. So again, thank you, Patrick and Daniel, for, for, for doing this today. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's been wonderful collaborating with the Flower team.
Terrific. And likewise, we've always loved working with you too. Absolutely. I, I would I would just say that if anyone wants to look at the repository that was mentioned during um, this conversation that's been uh, fit up there for where these uh, standards can eventually be um, put and they can be you know, a, a, a neutral source of where people can put code and so on. There's a link, for example, in the blog that Patrick um, posted. And I'm, I'm sure there's, you better find that link in many other places too, but that's one natural place if you're looking for it.